Good evening, everybody. Uh, today's the 20th of October at 7.06. Uh, this is the regular board meeting of the Arlington Housing Authority. Uh, and we'll start with a roll call. Um, Nick? You're on yeah. mute. Yeah, sorry, I was on mute. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Joanne? Here. Uh, Gar? Here. And Fiorella through Jack's phone? Here. Oh, there you go. That works great. Um, okay, so I'm just going to read off. I see. We, I want to read off the public participation guidelines one more time um, for folks wishing to speak, so we can give them ample time to figure out how to do this chat thing. <clears throat> so uh, when we get to the public participation section towards the end of the meeting, um, in really in an effort to conduct the business of the HA and to maintain an orderly meeting whereby all can hear and understand what is said without being talked over, I'd ask that everybody abide by the following guidelines. The tenant presidents. The tenant presidents will be recognized by the chair and do not have to raise a hand or send a message to the chat. Um, we'll recognize each one of you. I'd ask that your presentations are specific only to your facility and the tenants residing in your facility that you represent. Uh, I would also ask that any maintenance or building issues are brought up in your monthly maintenance meetings um, and not during these board meetings. Uh, that's the director of facilities and his staff are better prepared to answer and resolve any of those issues you may bring up as the board is not typically able to address these concerns without any additional data or research. Uh, any tenants wishing to speak, you should send a chat uh, directly. Now, from this point on, uh, we've determined that you have to send a chat to the chat feature. You won't be able to send a message uh, directly to one of us on the panel. It doesn't let you do that. So just simply send a chat message and everybody in the panel would see that chat. Um, so send a message with your name, your address and the subject that you wish to present. Uh, I would also ask that you refrain from bringing up any building and maintenance issues. As I said, those concerns are best brought at the maintenance meetings. Uh, you should also bring them to the attention of your presidents who will in turn bring them up at the maintenance meetings. And you can also report those issues directly to the AHA via the phone system. Um, and as I stated earlier, um, those meetings can resolve these things faster. They have the staff there to deal with it uh, and the research and the follow-up and, and a plan of action. However, if it's urgent or a president or tenant does not feel their issue has been adequately addressed or there are privacy concerns, uh, you should send an email directly to Jack Nagel, the interim executive director, who will follow up with you personally. Uh, and don't hesitate to do that if that's the case. <clears throat> uh, the general public, anyone wishing to present during the public participation, should also send a message in the chat feature stating your name, your address, and the subject matter you wish to present. Uh, and depending on the subject matter, I may not recognize you tonight, but add your subject to the next board meeting's agenda, uh, where we can engage in a more inclusive dialogue and keep in compliance with any open meeting law uh, requirements. Um, board response and time limits. So in except in unusual circumstances, uh, any matter presented for consideration to the board shall neither be commented upon by board members nor a decision made the night of the presentation. If deemed appropriate, in order to conform with the open meeting law, the subject may, may be added to the next board meeting whereby the AHA staff and the board and the public would have prior notice and can be prepared to address and answer any questions accordingly. Speakers will be allowed a three minute time limit to present. This may be extended to the discretion of the chair or if requested by any board member. So again, if you wish to, to present, uh, please just put something in the chat. I'll keep a list here. So uh, if this chat gets long, uh, don't worry about it. I'll keep a list. Uh, Ellen, I did see your request and we'll fit you in here before you have to take off. Um, so with that, um, let's move on now to the uh, interim executive director's report. Uh, Jack. Thank you. Um, so to start off with Winslow Towers, the window replacement and building envelope repair project is nearing completion. Uh, we are meeting with DHCD representatives, the contractor and the architect to discuss some potential change orders that will be needed related to the building envelope repairs. Um, I will have more information at the next meeting related to this. Uh, the notice to proceed has been provided to Rustic Fire Protection to start the work on fire pump at the on the fire pump at Winslow Towers. Also, the recommended low bid for the common area ADA bathroom project at Winslow Towers in Chestnut Manor 
will be voted on by the board tonight. At Chestnut Manor, the balcony resurfacing project is underway. The property manager, Caitlin Roberts, will continue to provide project updates and, notice, and notices to residents as needed. The contractor has begun work on the roof replacement project at Cusack Terrace. Uh, barriers have been set up in the Cusack Terrace parking lot for resident and public safety. At, at Drake Village, one of the committee members from the Creative Placemaking Committee, Cecily Miller, um, from Arlington Commission for the Arts and Culture, is working on implementing a haiku project for the residents of Drake Village. Interactive art projects like, like this will play a major role in the creative piece of the Creative Placemaking Project. We are excited to work with Cecily, the residents, and other committee members as we move forward. Um, at Monotomy Manor, I hope to have information soon related to when the survey for the window pro for the window survey. Sorry, I, I hope to have more have information soon related to when the survey for the windows at Monotomy Manor will take place. Um, we recently got assigned uh, a project manager from DHC related to that, so that should be moving along uh, fairly quickly at this point. And I hope to have more information soon. Uh, we will be meeting with residents of Monotomy Manor next week to discuss capital needs. This will help us to help us continue to engage and receive feedback as we prepare for next year's capital improvement plan. Uh, we plan to do this at all developments throughout the course of the year. Um, in regards to Verizon, uh, we have met with representatives from Verizon in regard to upgrading to Verizon Fios. The meetings have been productive and Verizon agreed to send out a letter to residents indicating that their service would not be terminated on October 26, 2021, as indicated in a letter that was sent out on September 7, 2021. And um, to my understanding, residents have received uh, that notice, which I'm, I'm happy to hear. Um, our resident services coordinator, Tricia Horgan, has been doing a great job working with residents. Uh, she is also currently working on a few different initiatives that will provide residents an opportunity to give back in the community, as well as connect them to other residents and agencies. Uh, one of these initiatives is to enlist the help of residents in writing letters to veterans and active duty service members this fall. Um, and, and then also uh, the Arlington Housing Authority is participating in the subsidized housing emergency rental assistance program, better known as SHERA. This program allows residents to self-certify certify and provide authorization for the Arlington Housing Authority to apply for rental assistance on behalf of eligible residents. We have received over $17,000 in rental assistance for residents that have been approved so far. And we hope to, to continue the, these efforts and, and um, increase that number um, substantially. Um, Board Chair Brian Connor and I have been invited to attend a training slash uh, panel conversation um, by Chief Flaherty from the Arlington Police Department and Jillian Harvey, the Town of Arlington's Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Division Director. I'm hopeful that we can collaborate with Jillian Har Harvey further on creating new training programs from, for Arlington Housing Authority staff. Um, also in regards to laundry management service, uh, due to supply chain related issues, automatic laundry will not be able to install the new laundry machines until mid-December. Uh, we will work with them to get the units installed as soon as possible. Um, in the interim, our property managers are available to provide change for residents that are having difficulty getting quarters. Residents that are interested in this should schedule an appointment with their property manager. And that's all. Great, any members have a question for Jack? <clears throat> I'm good, thanks. Thanks, Jack. Jack? I feel well, I think I lost you for a minute. Yeah, um, the connection is really- Is she still there, Jack? I just I just got her back on. So yeah, feel well, try to, to stay on the phone if, if, you, if you can. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right, then moving. Moving along, uh, along number four, uh, approval of low bidder and award of contract to Mill City Construction, the Arlington Housing Authority accessibility alterations to common bathrooms uh, at Chestnut's Man at Chestnut's Chestnut Manor, Winslow Towers, uh, in the amount of one hundred ninety one thousand four hundred fourteen dollars. You want to comment on that, Jack? Yes. Yeah, so that's the recommended below bidder that came in from. Um, from the de design team that we're using for this project. Um, we're excited to, to move forward with the project and, um, and get, a, get a start date and, and issue them the notice to proceed as soon as we can. 
Okay, so we have a motion to accept that. Yeah, I'll make the motion to accept low bid for Chestnut Manor DHCD project number 010093. I'll second. Second. Um, second by Nick. All in favor? Uh, Joanne? Yes. N Agar? Yes. Nick? Yes. Fiorella? I thought I got her on here. Um, All right, we'll keep moving. Uh, Fiorella's got some audio issues. And Brian, well, she's on mute. Oh, she's on mute. Yeah. I, I have I have Fiorella back. Uh, so Fiorella, your vote on that approval of um, the alteration of the common bathrooms. It's it's actually number four on the list. No, you don't have a chance. She said yes. Sorry. Okay. Let the record show that PRL is also a yes. Um, so that's the unanimous vote. Uh, now we move to number five approval of proposed change order requests for the balcony resurface project at Chestnut Manor. Um, Jack, you want to comment on that? Yes. So, so that change order that's being requested, the reason for that um, is that once the, the contractor, the team got out there, um, to look at the, the actual balconies, there were a lot more cracks than initially anticipated, uh, which has driven up the cost. Mm -hmm. um, so as a result, it's, it's you know, we, we, uh, we worked with them to come to this number. It was initially a little bit higher. We were able to, to bring it down. So um, us and the, the architect and DHED are, are comfortable with this. Okay. So do we have a motion to approve number five? Hey, hey Jack, I just have a question. Like what's, it's off like by 10 grand or something? Like yeah. they were off? It, yes, it's it's a, it's a little more more labor intensive, or it needs has to more cracks or more caulking. Or... Exactly. So I, so there's more cracks, which results in in um in the unit price isn't isn't changing at all, but the the amount of units itself is changing, which is driving up the price. And then the other aspect that that drove up the cost too was uh, the need by the contractor for an additional lift. So between the two of those two items. Um, we it, it resulted in that you know about ten thousand dollar total uh, change order, and then our architect looks at this cost increase, right? And they do, and, our, and then the engineer and project manager from um, from the state will get it as well. Okay, just out of curiosity, well, how if how far is it off of the next bidder? I I don't have that information. You don't know. Okay. But I, I get I, I get what you're getting at, but I can get you that information after. No, that's okay. I'm sure it's still conforms to. Uh, I, I'm fine with it. Okay. So I, I'll actually make a motion to approve it if you guys, if it's okay with you guys. Um, approve change order uh, for DHCD project 010094, Chestnut Manor, balconies. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second. Uh, all in favor, Joanne? Yes. Jar? Yep. Nick? Yes. And Fiorella? Yes. Yes. Can you guys hear me? Great. Can you, can there we hear? are. Great. Yep. Fiorella's a yes. Brian's a yes. So the motion passes. Uh, move to number six to update on integrated pest management. Jack? So we're so we've moved into another phase within our um, efforts to, to move to an integrated pest management model. Uh, we currently have a request for proposal out um, being advertised. Uh, the closing date, uh, well, the opening date for those for those sealed proposals will be November fourth. Um, so we're excited to move into this next stage and, and continue our our um, the work with this whoever was chosen, as well as with the town of Arlington's health department, uh, to come up with some. Uh, meaningful ways to improve this the service for the residents. Great. Any questions, Jack? Yeah, I have one. Um, before this is a, the new contracts approved, are we? There's still pest management yes. available to the tenants, right? Yeah. 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 Kind of. A, yep. And, and one of the reasons why was um, last year, you know, probably 
Um, it, it was a, a, a crosstown issue related to increased amounts of pest, um, pest activity, uh, but it drove our, our costs up last year. So we're in an area where by um, Mass General Law Chapter 30B, we need to uh, put it out for proposal um, to be in compliance because we are now over, you know, over that, that, um, that dollar, dollar value, over that $50,000 value for our entire uh, portfolio. Okay. So there's not a motion here, right? No. No. Just no, an update. Just, 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 just update. So now number seven, COVID update. Um, um, oddly enough, I think today they just voted for the boosters for Moderna on the news. But go ahead. You want to update us on that stuff? Yeah. So um, so the guidance that we've received so far from, from the state is that they don't expect the federal pharmacy participation program to be reinstated. And that was the, uh, the program that uh, provided the, the, the large numbers of vaccines for our residents in which the town of Arlington was able to be our partner and provide those. Um, however, they are you know, indicating that they're encouraging us to, um, to have our staff and residents vaccinated or get their boosters if they haven't already um, and to work with community partners to help them get transportation if needed or leverage additional policy partnerships where, where needed. But they've also, when the Pfizer booster came out, the state said they were going to try to work with, um, with housing authorities that did use the Pfizer vaccine in their deployment. So we'll, we'll see what ends up happening now that they have approved these additional ones, and maybe that will kickstart some additional conversations yeah. or opportunities. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I saw on the news, it did say that you've got to go to the pharmacies now. So, um, you know, perhaps we can reach out to the local pharmacies and See if we can work with them. So we'll continue to work on that one. Um, number eight, discussion, resident holiday meals. Jack. So one, one of the, um, the items that's been brought up a couple of times in the tenant president maintenance meetings present um, are the holiday parties that typically would happen in the December timeframe. Um, resident, pre, the tenant presidents have asked, you know, if, if they can go ahead and, and start planning these. Um, however, obviously we have no idea what, December is going to look like. Never mind next week with the with the way the pandemic's moving along. So um, I wanted to bring this to the board's attention just so I know. Last year we did provide holiday meals. Um, hopefully they would be able to still have parties, but maybe it's worth a discussion, anyways. Yeah, and, and the, the current status in Arlington is still masks. Is that correct, the public yeah. health director? And like you said, this is very much an unknown. I mean, if it's obviously if it's still mask and you can't have these large groups, then then I think we should definitely do those meals again. I think it was, you know, sure it was a lot of work, a lot of coordination, but the presidents were, were really the key in helping us put that together and, and we made it successful. So um, anybody have any thoughts on that? The members? No. No, so, I, agree I, agree with, I, agree I agree with it. I agree with doing something. Yeah, I agree with what you said, Brian. Probably best to just plan on just just getting the meals again. But yeah, I mean, I, I think if if we if we come to November and realize things change, I mean, they could put these parties together rather quickly. Um, sure. So uh, we, let's put it on the agenda for next month. Uh, Joanne, yeah. did you raise your hand? Yes, I just wanted to know if you'd have the same. Um, way of making meals available for the residents of Monotomy Manor. That seemed to work out well last year. Yeah, yeah, I, I would, honestly, I thought um, Dags did a great job. It was it was easy, they were very easy to work for. I know I went back and forth three or four times because somebody got the wrong meal, the wrong dessert, and uh, Sam up at D'Agostino's was uh, more than willing, more than willing to, uh, to change things. So uh, yeah, I, it would be my recommendation to do the same. I mean, he may have a different, meal uh, yep go ahead uh, no that wasn't my question yeah, no. <laughs> but fine but um we'd have to hear back from the residents about it but are we having the same we're giving these coupons to people at monotomy manor uh, i would do this i would do the same i think i think that worked out very well yeah i, I mean i think it was done. Yeah, I mean, again, it's a lot of work for the staff, but it worked out, and um, especially in light of this COVID, um, where we mm -hmm. gather, I mean, I think it worked out pretty well. So, so you know, why don't we do this? I'll I'll chat with 
to Agostino's <clears throat> at some point. Um, but let's put it on the agenda for next um, December, next November, next meeting in November. Um, hopefully, we'll have good news. That they can have a party, and um, but if they don't, we can certainly put something together. But um, so number nine. Uh, request to be recognized by a minority minute tenant organization. Now, unfortunately, the board members just received their bylaws this afternoon. I have not had the chance to look at it. Um, Jack, you want to add some light to this? Yeah, I, I, I mean, they, they provided the bylaws and, and they also provide the letter to be recognized. Um, it, you know, I, I I understand, yeah, what that the, the board may not have had a chance to fully look into it, but um, they have provided by my understanding, the items that they need to uh, to be recognized. And maybe John Greco would be able to provide some additional comments on that. Can I also actually add something to that? And uh, Fiorella is asking uh, to speak, Brian. No, go ahead, Fiorella. Um, so yeah, so again, so I went to the bylaw meeting that we had. I'm only concerned about that. I think that the whole board should have some time to read over it. There were also some things that were voted on at the meeting that haven't been added to the bylaws yet. So maybe giving some time to the tenants association as well to add that in would be ideal. Um, one being that uh, adding being able to request and receive within seven calendar days a copy of the meeting agenda or so minutes from any of the regular held, you know, of our meetings slash their meetings too. It hasn't been added to the bylaws yet. I don't know if they just maybe didn't have enough time. Um, but yeah, I don't know if John Greco has anything to add to that too. So do we, uh, John Greco, do we actually, does the board have to vote on these bylaws or? or well, the board should vote to accept them that they've uh, properly presented bylaws, which are acceptable uh, to you know, the, under the regulations. They look like they're very well drafted, to be honest. But that doesn't mean that if there were things that were supposed to be put in that were omitted, we shouldn't uh, we, we should ignore that. So if there's things that have been omitted that that were agreed to be put in, those can all be, always be added. Um, it looks like it's a professionally a well done um, set of bylaws. I've seen them before. It looks like pretty good. But again, if there are things that were uh, supposed to be in there that didn't find their way in, we should obviously check that and make sure those are in there because if that's what was what was agreed, uh, that should be there as well. But but help me with our, our governance of, of the organization. Um, no, we we aren't we aren't approving the bylaws in the sense that we are saying uh, that everything is perfect in the bylaws. We we say they've 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 met the threshold of submitting appropriate bylaws. If the bylaws, okay. for example, had three pages and they didn't cover a lot of the important areas, we'd say this is not really a good set of bylaws or a full set of bylaws as intended in the regulations. But it looks like it's a it's a pretty uh, extensive one. I haven't had a chance to review them also myself, but I, I just did them a little while ago. So that um, it, it looks like it's a, a generally good set of bylaws. That's all we would look to. It's a set of bylaws that meets the regulations. However, if there are supposed to be things in there that um, was were agreed upon that didn't make it, obviously the people who agreed on those things would want those things in the bylaws too, and we should make sure that that's that's corrected if there's any errors. But only that would because, be only because that would be up to the. Us. That, that would be up to their next meeting and, and they, Correct. yeah, not necessarily us, it would be up to them. So, so should we, uh, John, your advice, since you read them, should we vote and accept them or should we wait till next meeting or have another meeting? What, what do you recommend? I have not read them yet. I've just I just got them a little while ago, so I've kind of okay. reviewed them. The only thing I've looked at is they seem to have the elements of, of the appropriate bylaws, okay? But I haven't looked at every word in it to every paragraph uh, to see if they've got no. everything. But I guess okay. what's important is if they they voted to have something added there that's relevant, and you know, they should tell us if, if they believe something's missing or there are things that they agreed should be in there. They should let us know, and we'll we'll let the uh, committee know that. Uh, that uh, there are people who have claimed that there are things that were voted on that were not there, and that has to be resolved or should be resolved among the committee members. So is there any need or urgency to this? I mean, if we put it on to the next meeting or um, is anything going to happen or not happen? No, I, I don't think so, because as far as uh, uh, the residents having a say and, and being participatory in the things they, they have a right to participate in, this wouldn't affect it right now. 
Um, yeah. This is just a kind of a, a perfunctory uh, requirement that uh, they should comply with, but uh, I don't think it should affect any of their rights at the moment. Okay, so um, we've accepted the, the election, correct, Jack? Yeah, we, we, we presented the election results last yeah. meeting. And That's right. But so, there wasn't any formal vote, I don't think. Yes. So perhaps we could vote to accept the election and then uh, table the, because we didn't get the meeting, the, the bylaws till a short while ago, we could put those on the next meeting and then for, give Fiorella or anybody the opportunity to chat with the with Jen, the president, and, and see if they can be adjusted uh, accordingly. Uh, does that sound like a plan? Yes. Anybody have any objection to that? So can we have somebody put that into a form of a motion? I put into a motion to hold uh, uh, accepting the bylaws until next meeting. I didn't hear that, Jack. What, can you repeat that? She said she put into motion holding the acceptance of the bylaws until next meeting. But accepting the election and the election of offices. Is that right? Well, we just I mean, go in. I mean, it already happened. I'm okay with that uh, being uh, passed. It's just the bylaws and the additions that have to make, be made to it that were already voted on at the bylaw meeting. Okay, so I think we need a motion to accept the election of the manor for the local tenants organization. So moved. Okay, second. I second that. Okay, so let's have a vote on that one. Nagar? Yes, I, I vote yes. Mick? Mick? Yes, yes. Uh, Joanne? Yes. And Fiorella? Yes. And Brian is a yes. Okay, so we've accepted the election. So that, and now I don't know if we actually need a vote for this because we didn't give it out you know, enough time for the public meeting. Um, so perhaps we'll just table the minutes and put it onto the next meeting. Uh, and that would give the committee an opportunity to, to work out any of these bugs. Does that sound like a good plan? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, So number 10, status of John Griffin. So I had spoken with John Griffin a short while ago, uh, days ago, and he did inform me that he is going to retire and um, as of the end of October, submit his uh, letter for the end of October. Uh, he certainly will stay and help on board on a, a consultant basis. Uh, if Jack needs him, I know Jack has worked diligently with him on passwords and access of different things, uh, but he's decided to uh, finally retire. Um, he's been the director here since I believe 2007. Um, he's been a member of the Board of Commissioners for, Nick, correct me, 15 years prior prior to that? Yeah, at least, yep. yeah. So he's been a stable force here and, and well-deserved uh, of a retirement. So, um, so in that, and with that in mind, um, I'm gonna assign a committee, appoint a committee of five uh, persons uh, made up of myself, uh, Nick, uh, as longest standing commissioner, uh, I'm going to John Greco uh, as the attorney, Rich Conlin as the CPA, and I'm going to appoint a tenant president to be on the committee. Um, that will be the hiring committee. Um, we'll advertise per DCHD guidelines. Um, the data will come to me directly. So uh, I assume Jack is going to apply for the position. So we'll keep him out of this entire process. Um, and we'll determine um, a matrix for establishing qualifications. Um, and then at one point, we will have a uh, public meeting uh, in which the full board can meet as well as the tenant presidents and ask questions to um, uh, when we boil it down to the limited applicants. So we'll have a pretty inclusive and um, um, very, very open um, a board process to uh, determine um, the next executive director. Uh, the timeline, uh, um, I personally, I think we could get it done and, and get somebody in the position and, and uh, um, probably by the end of November, I would hope for, um, the end of November, sometime in December. 
Uh, in the meantime, obviously, Jack is still our interim director and we'll hold that position until then. Um, so that's, um, any questions on that? Yes. Is there any yep. required, hello, is there any required length of time in terms of advertising and waiting for responses or deliberations? Is, this, is a month is what the state um, requires or will accept? I just want to make sure we get everything. Yeah, I mean, the DCHD is, yeah, D DCHD is pretty clear in all this. Um, I didn't print it before uh, tonight, um, but um, Jack, you would advertise for the uh, maintenance spot. And do you remember what the timing was? It probably is the same timing. I, I don't remember off 100% offhand, but I think it'd be a, at a minimum two weeks, but it could be a month. Um, yeah. It's um, in public housing notice 2021-03. Yeah. So we, we obviously have to follow DCHD guidelines on this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. There's, a, there's a new regulation. I'm sorry. I don't exactly remember what it said yeah but it's come out this year i think it has to do with diversity and and um and affirmative action sort of things that we have right. to advertise for so long and and we just and, want to make sure we get it right <laughs> uh, absolutely and, and that and, and it's the advertising in certain communities and newspapers that you know that this new uh, regulation kind of mandates so we are certainly going to follow it that's why you know with john greco um, and Rich Conlon on the board, I think we can be assured that we're going to follow all appropriate measures. So, um, any other questions on that? Okay, number 11. Uh, we're going to just one thing, we're going to do something for John. He, you know, we should sort of recognize him as a long standing great commissioner and yeah. board member. Right. Yep. I, I, I fully agree. I, like I said, he's he's got many, many, many years affiliated with the Arlington Housing Authority. And, right. um, you know, well-deserving of retirement, but certainly well-deserving of, of being recognized uh, as <laughs> uh, a true leader. Um, you know, we think back and, and the millions and millions of dollars that, you know, he secured in funding. So uh, uh, I think we'll put your thinking caps on. Let's put it on for another agenda, um, yep. another meeting or so. And then uh, and we certainly should come up with something. I agree. Yeah, great. Thanks. Um, so number 11, approval of regular minute, uh, minute meeting, meeting minutes of 922-2021. Everybody get a chance to look at those? Yeah, I, I just, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead, Carl. No, I was just gonna say, they look okay to me, but Joanne, go ahead. <laughs> yes, um, when Jack, uh, gave his report and talked about the flu shots being vaccines being given out in the senior residence. I did make a remark that I thought there should be some effort to make them available to those to the residents in monotony manner. Because the, the flu shots are done by the Council on Aging, I believe, with the health department. And of course, the family, our family, units do not are not covered by uh, the council on aging so i just like that in the minutes please thank you okay so do you want to make a motion to accept the minutes with that added in there joanne yes i move that we accept the minutes with the addition of my comment at jack and jack's during after jack's uh report. Yeah, I will second that. Okay. Um, all in favor? Gar? Yes. Nick? Yes. Duane? Yes. Ellen? Uh, not Ellen. I'm sorry. Um, Fiorella? Yes. And myself as a yes. Um, and now I realize that I didn't recognize Ellen. She put a chat there. Uh, if she could talk before 730. Um, under local tenant organizations representing the president of um, of CUSAC. Ellen, are you still on by chance? Ellen Lay? Yes, I'm, I'm, I stayed on. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm yeah. very sorry about that. So <laughs> That's okay. uh, Ellen, uh, Mike McGinty is the president of uh, CUSAC and Mike is, is a, um, not a late, not a nighter person. So he's asked if Ellen could, 
could step in and, and give a report. So I, I see no problem with that. Uh, so Ellen, go ahead. You're on deck. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I just, um, I just, there's a couple of things that I wanted to bring up after speaking with Michael. Um, one of them was, I think at the last <clears throat> meeting, uh, there wasn't uh, a decision or um, information yet about whether the tenant associations would be getting the money um, that they normally get. So uh, in terms of planning, it would be great to know if, if that determination has been made and if so, when it might be expected. I, I can answer that. Um, we're actually working on that now. Jack's coming up with a proposal for that. The, um, the state stipulates that we've got to give $6 per unit. Um, and that funds are to be spent on the, the business of the tenant association, printers, paper, things like that, uh, not necessarily parties. So we're trying to come up with some type of a um, two, phase, two, two phases here. Um, you know, uh, you technically can't get any funds until you have bylaws and you submit a budget. So um, we need to work with the, the associations to formalize bylaws and get budgets in before we can send checks. So it's on deck for the next, um, uh, and I don't want to call it a maintenance meeting. I had a chat with Jack early. We should probably call it president's meeting because that's where a lot of the meat and potatoes would get done. So it's on deck for the next meeting and hopefully we'll have something in play just to give you an idea on that one. Um, for the next president's meeting? Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, another just quick issue was it's not a, a, um, a specific maintenance issue that would be discussed at the, ma at the maintenance um, meeting, but just um, I know there had been some talk um, some years back about a, like a, a maintenance checklist. I'm not sure if it might be a state based one. Um, maybe it has to be adjusted per, for each building, you know, because buildings vary, but um, you know, if there is some kind of a, a specific checklist that that the maintenance uh, team goes by in terms of, uh, you know, have, making sure that individual things get done and overall things get done um, on a regular basis as needed. Just for transparency, could, if the tenants could, or the tenants, presidents could have access just in terms of, you know, having a sense of how this process gets done. Yeah, definitely a question. Definitely a question for the, for the president's meetings. Okay. Okay. And I just wanted to just give you a quick update regarding the, the flu clinic. And you may not even be aware of this, but um, I, I, I'm involved like every year when we try to do this, but this past year, they only did two of the buildings and um, two, they ran out of the flu vaccine. So two, two buildings didn't get the shots. So anyway, oh. uh, just hoping to try to prevent that from happening next time. Like so, for example, I'm I'm still struggling to get mine. I'm like, you know, I wanted to get it a month ago. So, just um, maybe just to you know keep that in mind for another time, like to make sure that we order enough so that you know to make and who, sure. Who did that, Alan? Was that the town? Um, I, I think. Well, I think it's Council of Aging with the, maybe the Board of Health or something. Um, the Council of Aging, I think, coordinates it, and I guess they ordered a bunch, and they ordered a bunch of the high dose, um, and then they did some, and then they, for, for two of the buildings that didn't, that they ran out of, which was CUSAC, and I think um, Chestnut Manor didn't get it either, um, and they said that there would be something at Town Hall, um, which isn't, isn't, isn't the same as being in your building, and it also happened to be that it was only for people over 60, and it was for people in the town in general. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't for our buildings. It was for anybody in Arlington who was over 60. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, anyway, it's just trying to, I mean, it's, it's done now. Um, it's, you know, but just trying to, you know, for next time to just try to make sure that we can uh, make sure that all the buildings get covered because we want to make it easy for people and, you know, make sure that it's, uh, it's something that people can get yeah. done right. I'm, I'm actually really struggling to get my flu shot now and I wanted to get it a month ago um, and I'm high risk. So, um, you know, just would be, I had, I had asked like, well, could you reschedule it? <laughs> you know, it just seemed like it, it was a done deal. So um, it would be great if, if next time um, if the same kind of problem doesn't get repeated, that would be great. Yeah, we'll look into it. Thank you, appreciate All it. Right. Sorry for making you okay. late, yeah. Okay. All right. I got to go. All right. Thank Thanks. you. Happy Halloween. Enjoy the fall weather. Bye-bye.
All right, Pam Hauser, is Pam on from Winslow? Let me just find her. There she is. Here we go. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, Pam. Yes. Okay, first of all, bad news. The Red Sox are losing seven to one. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bad news on effort. Okay. Um, we had an incident here in the building today, and I was very appalled at what went on. And since, Brian, you and Jack are going to be meeting with the fire chief, I think you should be aware. The fire alarm went off in this building today, and it took the fire department over 10 minutes to get here. Mm. And it was quite disturbing since these alarms are extremely loud. And I can walk faster down to the fire department than they took to get here. And I think that should be brought up with your meeting with the fire department. Um, the only other thing I have is um, just to let you know, I'm one of those that I can't go to the office to get quarters. I don't have a check. And it took me four banks today to get one roll of quarters, which made it very difficult for me. So I just want to know that that's... And when you come to the holiday meals, I, my treasurer and I have been calling um, caterers to see if we can book something. And you know, 90% of the caterers are all booked through December already. So mm. it's going to be oh. very difficult to get a holiday party going. Mm. But the main thing I want is for you people to be aware of the fire alarm that went off at over yeah. 10 minutes before the fire department came. It will definitely bring that up. Thank you very much. All right. That's all I have. Okay, thanks, Pam. Um, I didn't see Sharon from Cusack. Jack, did you see anybody from Cusack? Chestnut, I don't see anybody. Oh, I'm sorry, Chestnut, yeah, yeah. We don't have uh, Drake. We need to get an election up here again. So let's go to Jen Hernandez. Find her. Me Mana? I know Jen's on. No, I, I, yep, I found it. Unmute. Unmute. Okay. okay. All set? Yep, go ahead. Okay. Um, so thank you for recognizing the election. Um, and I apologize that the board didn't have time to familiarize themselves with the bylaws prior to this meeting. Um, however, um, I believe that we've We've done all that we were supposed to as far as to get recognized, as Jack had said. Um, and just to correct correct um, Fiorella, the um, bylaws were um, done with all of the stuff that was voted at the bylaw meeting was put into the bylaws. Um, I myself edited them as well as the secretary um, who put in all the changes. So. Um, Unfortunately, it's, it will have to wait for next month. I understand you already motioned and voted, but um, is I don't know if there's a way to change that or not because the um, what they were said was actually not accurate. All right. Well, technically, um, technically, we have to advertise this stuff 48 hours before the meeting, so we really can't. We're unable to vote on it only because it wasn't properly advertised for the public, uh, the open meeting law. So, okay, you know, so with that, you know, let's put that on one side. On the other side, there's really no urgency to it because you know, we've accepted your uh, your election and so forth. So, okay, uh, so it's not a big deal. You know what I mean? Um, I, I think the only advice I would have is, you know, chat with Fiorella and see what what are these items that didn't make it on there. Um, yeah, we're actually actually we're pretty aware of that because another tenant um, who wouldn't have had access to the bylaws. Uh, messaged one of the council this evening before the meeting saying uh, the exact same things that Fiorella said and um, said that she had a copy of the bylaws but wouldn't tell us from whom. Hmm. Um, so th this is why this is a little bit more concerning as far as, you know, the fact that um, there's questions raised about the bylaws not being uh, the way that they were supposed to be after the, the meeting. So, yeah. Yeah. so that, that's your first challenge as president. Just to try and meet mm -hmm. that and, and see if you can all agree on it. Um, well, no, we, we already did that, Brian, actually. We already did that. Okay. So, 
Yeah. So, that's... so whatever you present to us next week. So let's put it this way. John Greco will review them. Wonderful. And if there's any changes, he and Jack will give you a shout back. And so whatever you present to us next month, um, we'll just, we'll vote to accept it. I mean, again, it's your work product. It's not our work product. So, right. um, so we'll just, we'll go from there. Okay. It sounds like a plan. And, you know, we look forward to building a very productive and peaceful relationship with all of you. Great, great, man. We appreciate you stepping forward and volunteering. Uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of work. Yep. It is, but it's worth it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, so we move on to public. Uh, I have one person who's asked on public, um, John Ward. Did you see anybody else, Jack? I just reviewed it. Yes. Um, there, was, there were three individuals that asked. Um, one was Mr. Ward. Uh, one was, uh, was, was Lillian. 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 Okay, I don't see that one, but let's well, let's go in. And... I, I think it's Marianne Donovan. Um, Marianne, could you just confirm in the chat if that or whoever's? Um... Okay, let's move on to uh, John Ward from Winslow Towers. And John, your question is about the maintenance director's position. Brian, real quick, Kelda yep. said you Kelda said she didn't get your response. Um, check, check the chat. I I initially emailed and it went directly to Jack. Then I emailed the entire panel with that. But um, so if you don't, I'll um. So uh, I'll just tell since since Kelda's comment went to the whole panel. Um, um, the response that I that I emailed the whole panel, Kelda, is that you should contact the attorney, our attorney, John Greco, directly with that concern. So his email is John. L Greco, G R E C O at Verizon.net. So I would bring your concerns directly to him. All right, John Ward. Go ahead, John Ward. You're on the mute, John. John, you're still on mute. Hmm. Now there's two John Woods. You're still on mute, John. John, you're on mute. Okay, can you hear me? Now we can. Go ahead. We can. Okay, thank you. The end of June, Winslow Towers had its first Tenants Association meeting in over a year. At that meeting, we were all, the people in attendance were notified by the Director of Maintenance that he was going to retire at the end of July. So that's been over 12 weeks ago. Has any, nobody has seemed to have given anybody information on what's happening with that. Yeah, I mean, the short answer is he is not retired yet. So he hasn't well, uh, put in his papers and he's still functioning as the director of maintenance. Well, so when, when do, what, you know, like I say, we make this information public at one place and it, and it turns out that it's not true. How do we get that stuff corrected in a more timely fashion than me having to address it here? Well, I think... The first point is when the employee decides to retire and puts in his papers, then we would know he's going to retire. So he has not submitted his retirement. He, I don't know what he said at your meeting, but he is not retired. Um, well, I he know he will retire he, at some point in time, but he so once we was, know. He said that he was retiring uh, July 31st. Yeah, well, he hasn't. He hasn't done that. So well, listen, still, so who do we believe? We got to believe somebody, Mr. Connor. 
Well, and we're talking tonight. about a senior member of the uh, uh, Housing Authority Administration. Um, we need to know this stuff. Um, well, well the John, I don't to keep this information up to date somewhere. Yeah, I'm not sure you actually need to know it. I think it's more important for Jack to know it. But that's not true at all. So, uh, John, when when the director decides to retire, we'll make that notice and we'll make the appropriate search. So that's all I can tell you. The search has been going on since the end of of the, since the beginning of of uh, uh, July. So when I don't I know. Do I'm just going to say it one more time, and then we're going to move on. Well, when that's what you do all the time. You keep putting this stuff off, Mr. Connor. And, to, and that's what we have to do with you, because you not, you're not hearing me. The employee has not resigned. Well, you have He's an answer. Retired. When he retires, we'll initiate the process to replace his position. So, Well, I'm looking for you. some straight, straight, honest information. Can I count on that as being the gospel, Mr. Connor? Okay, it's time to move on, Jack. Who else do we have? And um, was there Marianne? Marianne Donovan. Marianne? Go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay, great. Um, I wanted to just um, acknowledge um, the retirement of John Griffin and um, Nick's um, acknowledgement that something should be done to honor that. Um, and I'm wondering, I mean, I know there are COVID precautions and so it makes it awkward, but I know there are lots of people here at Drake Village, myself included, who would just love to say goodbye to him. Um, you know, he's really done a lot for us. And um, so I just wanted to put that out there. I know that there are precautions in place, but if he could maybe come here and we could give him a cake or something. So that's it. Thanks. I think, yeah, I think that Marianne, that's a great idea. Um, and, and I think when the, when the time comes, we should definitely do that. That's a great idea. So thank you for that. Um, and and all the I, believe, I believe Vanessa Roselle uh, was also asking to be recognized. Let's see. Vanessa from Menominee Manor, right? Correct. Let me um, find her in the. Vanessa? No, Jack. Yeah, it, it doesn't look like she's responding. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, seeing no other. Seeing no other um, persons requesting. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Can you hear me now? Whoops. Oh, well, let's let's table yep. that for a second, see if we can get her back. Yep. She's on mute now. Vanessa, you back on? I feel like I'm talking to the space shuttle. Vanessa? Yep. Hi, can you hear me? There you go. There you go. Oh, hi, sorry about that. Hi, That's I just fine. wanted to um, I just wanted to say a couple of things. Um, first of all, thanks for for attempting to I guess recognize us tonight. And I know Jen touched what I want to touch on, but uh, one was last holiday we didn't receive the Dagostinos. We received the ten dollar gift cards to stop and shop at Monotony Manor. Um, I just wanted to correct that, and maybe this year we could potentially get a meal or or something different. Um. We ended up going with the stop and shop gift cards down here. Uh, Fiorella had suggested that. It was very nice, I, but it would be nice if we could get something cooked for us. Um, and second of all, um, the, the main issue that Jen brought up is the bylaws, we had a great turnout. Uh, of course, there was a little drama that was to be expected, um, but we voted on all the things that are, are 
are noted. We checked notes amongst all five board members. We checked, we, you know, we edited it, we, we printed it. And we had two residents have copies of our new bylaws in their hands today. The only people that have them are us and the board members, you guys. So Fiorella bringing this up, and yes, I am calling Fiorella directly out because her name was brought up by one of them. Um, it, it doesn't seem like this is legal. So I am gonna contact Jack Cooper about the legality of those bylaws being handed out to tenants um, without, before, you know, before them being recognized. And uh, Jen did touch on that, but where, we, where we're supposed to go forward with this, there's not much to go because we know what was voted on, as does the room full of people. And Fiorella and a couple of two people that didn't win the election are, are saying otherwise. So I just find it odd that we're holding holding this up for three people's opinions and All not right. fat. All right, hold on, Vanessa. Hold on one, one minute. So okay. just, you, you, I don't think you probably heard me when I explained to Jen. So there's two reasons. Number one, we didn't get 48 hours notice of the okay. Of, so we can't we can't vote on it. But number okay. two, it's not really something of urgency here. It's not gonna. It can wait till next month. I, I think more importantly, it's up to you folks to go back and resolve this, and not us. We don't tell you what to write in for the bylaws. I mean, there's certain things, as John Greco said, have to be in there from a DCHD perspective, but not from our perspective. We don't. It's your work product. And it's your organization, so you guys are going to have Correct. to work this out. So um, that's the just, that's the challenge of the president and the board. So uh, we so honestly, have, we don't, you know, we don't just we don't need to go through the the he said she said. I mean, Fiorella does live down there, so she would have a voice as a tenant, of course. But more importantly, but more importantly, as a board member on your end, I don't think on a professional level that that she should be handing out papers. I mean, sh she shouldn't be handing out papers from you well, guys to us, and us to, to, to tenants. And, and I just want yeah. that to be known. That's more importantly. I, I respect yeah. that. Yeah, I don't think that is not but true. It is what it is. It's very yeah. unprofessional, That's all I want to say. I Thank you. Wasn't at <laughs> have a good night. All right, so again, it's your, you guys need to work that out, so. Um, um, good luck. I'm sure you'll be able to do that. Anything else? Okay, Nick, we go back to your motion. I move to uh, adjourn. Do we have a second? Carl will second it. Second. All in favor, Joanne? Yes. Nick? Yes. Gar? Yes. And Fiorella? Yes. Great. And myself is yes. So thank you. It's. Um, is adjourned. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thank See ya. Thanks, Jack.